What makes cave diving so dangerous? Not an expert or much of a caver but it fascinates me, so here's my take, in a cave you have no escape when things go wrong. Thus danger times 100. Just think about what a cave is, dark, unknown, ever-changing. At the mouth you have light but as you go deeper in, it's going to fade and eventually become pitch black. What if your light dies? Or you take a wrong turn down an offshoot? Or you get turned around? Or there's sediment from the walls mucking up the visibility to just inches? Trusting to see your way out is not viable, thus you likely end up with line. But line is not perfect. Line can get caught on gear, trapping you in. Line can break on sharp things, like a rock wall. Line can get confused with the last guys. There's an entire debate to line. Next, consider the environment. Water composition may change if a cave connects to above ground points. Current is a huge variable as even a small amount of ocean activity becomes a major force when pushed into a narrow space. Air, if the cave is not full, can be toxic. And there's always a wall to smack into or run into if your chute narrows in. Then, consider your gear. For anything more than a peek into the entrance, you're talking a technical rig but what if that all goes wrong? Your gas levels are off. Your dry suit won't dump air in the left leg. You can't just head off and up to blow the dive. You're inside with a long way to go when panic hits. And perhaps above all else, caves there deceivingly tempting. I've peered into them in beautiful, fairly shallow, waters. Inside was the promise of spectacular views and I'm sure once in, the temptation would only be to keep on going, further and further. Sounds awesome, huh? Number 1. If you run out of air you can't bolt to the surface because you're under rock, not sky. So you die? Number 2. If the guideline breaks and you can't use it to retrace your kicks, so to speak, in many slash most cave complexes it's easy to get lost by going down the wrong passageway, and then run out of air. So you die? Number 3. If you forget to do the obligatory gentle frog kick and do a conventional, in open water, fin kick, just one, in many caves the bottom has a thick layer of fine, fine silt that your kick kicks up into the water, forming an opaque emulsion, what's called faceplate visibility, all you can see is the inside of your dive mask's faceplate, that prevents you from even seeing your gauges or the guideline, or knowing which way is up or down for sure. And that opaque emulsion can last until long after your air is gone. So you die? Number 4. Cave divers generally have redundant equipment, but if something goes wrong, such as a free-flowing reg or burst high-pressure hose or computer battery failure, and you don't have a backup, or have one but can't switch over to it fast enough, you die. Number 5. No matter how experienced a diver you are, there's a little guy in your head that wants to panic, because, in our natural environment, the open woodlands slash savannas of East Africa, sometimes panic was the right move. Underwater, however, it's almost always the wrong move and in a cave it's the wrong move cubed. Divers learn how to keep the little panic guy under control through training and experience and judgment, but we also know he never goes away completely. In cave diving the little panic guy is even more frantic, meeting on the walls of his cage, trying to get out and, he thinks, save you. So he's harder to keep under control. And if he does get out and takes control of you, you die. Navy pilots are some of the bravest, coolest headed guys on the planet, able to land a supersonic fighter on a heaving carrier deck in the middle of the night, and many of them can get an attack of nerves and have trouble nailing the landing, sometimes having to go around multiple times, and sometimes running out of fuel and having to ditch. Do you think you're braver and calmer than a Navy fighter pilot? Number 6. If your dive buddy has any of the above problems, he or she may inadvertently take you with him. Just run the disaster scenarios through your mind. And then you both die. Number 7. If you have an unexpected physical problem, the odds of you being able to deal with successfully go way down if you're diving under 50 feet of rock. And not just heart attacks or strokes. For example, as you age you get a buildup of tiny bits of detritus in the semicircular canals of your ears. And sometimes one of those specks gets lodged under one or more of the hairs in those canals that your body uses to orient you, they're why you can stand up straight with your eyes closed. What happens then is extreme vertigo, as you try to see, your visual field jerks back and forth rapidly and uncontrollably. It happened to me once while I was driving on the freeway, and it took all of my resources to get over to the side and stop. So I know what I'm talking about. If this happened during a cave dive, you'd be in really, really serious trouble. Most likely you'd die. The bottom line is that cave divers lose their life insurance, regular sport divers don't. Those insurance company actuaries are worth paying attention to. 
As it happens you can experiment with cave diving safely, by doing cavern diving in a cenote in the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico. Any experienced diver can try this, led by a dive guide who has the special training needed. My wife and I did this in the Dos Ojos Cavern near Playa del Carmen. I recommend it highly, and you may find that it satisfies your interest in cave diving without undergoing the rigorous training and risk involved with real cave diving. One thing that many of the previous answers failed to give enough credit is that in most caves the current is not usually a very good means of clearing anything stirred up by the divers themselves so it takes a lot of time to clear bad visibility in a cave. Here is where cave diving goes off the rails many times. No visibility but plenty of light. But the particulate in the water is so dense that light will not shine through it. That fact is exactly why cave divers long ago developed a frog kick rather than use the typical up-down fin movement of our divers. The idea is to not touch the bottom with your fins because most cave dives require entry and exit by the same route. That means that if the first diver stirs up the bottom none of the divers behind them will be able to see at all. No problem if there is only a single guideline being placed by the first diver, right? Not exactly. Unless the other divers can identify the one guideline that they can trust, they may make a wrong turn at a junction. If that is not bad enough, it gets worse. If you cannot see the line then what do you do when you want to check depth or remaining air in your first tank? Just hold the gauges up to your face mask, right? If you believe that then try it. Put on your mask and put your wristwatch up to the mask and see if you can tell the time. Probably not because humans eyes cannot focus at less than about 20 centimeters and if you wear corrective lenses then the distance is even further. As a result of experiencing such no visibility, I constructed a PVC tube of the length that I needed at the time and changed over the years, with clear flat plastic at both ends that I could place on the gauge and then look through the tube by pressing it against my mask. That gave me a clear 8 inch tube with which to look through. Now, before you steal my idea, which I freely provide if you ever need it, let me tell you that I had a few failures before getting it right. Plumbing PVC is too weak. Find heavy duty PVC in 1.5 inch inside diameter, the way that PVC is sold is inner diameter not outer diameter and get some equally thick lexan or equivalent and cut a circle out to match the outer diameter not the inner diameter of the tube, and then using some very strong, compatible for both materials, glue. My first one failed by implosion at slightly less than 40 meters. If there is as little as a pinhole in the seal at 5 atmospheres, it will fill the tube. If it is perfectly sealed and flimsy, it will crumple. If the clear ends are weak, the pressure will suck one of the lenses into the PVC rather loudly. I knew from the beginning what did not work, but it took me 5 tries to get it right. I have found over the years that not all cave divers imagine that such a thing will be needed because they never stirred up the bottom, or kicked improperly and made it bad for those behind them, and also that I carried my focal extender with me and only used it 3 times in all the years. I was certainly glad that I had carried it those 3 dives in particular. No, I do not make and sell them. I have never seen a commercial one that I could buy, but I was happy to have lugged it along every single cave slash cavern slash restricted overhead dive where this might be a concern. Finally, what makes cave diving so dangerous is the very definition of cave diving itself, an overhead environment where natural light beyond the entrance or exit cannot be seen once inside the cave itself. If the diver can see the light at the entrance or exit, then it is a cavern dive. The technicality of cave diving, extra lights, lines, no direct ascent path to the surface, movement and air management, no mistakes, calm demeanor at all times, and others, is what makes it dangerous but probably the most fulfilling of all the types of diving because it is pure exploration in its simplest form. Thank you for joining us. Make sure to subscribe and click the like button. When the stories run out, make sure to flip the tape over to continue. Adios amigos.